Hey, it's Joel, 3D printing nerd here at Joseph Prusa's booth at World Maker Fair. Hey, Joe. Hi there. You have something new to show off at Maker Fair. Can you tell me a little bit about it? I guess I've heard some rumors. Uh, so we have the Mark III here uh, with all its new features. So shall we talk about them? Yeah, please. Let's hear. What's what's your uh, what's your favorite feature overall of the new machine? Well, I'm puzzled. I love all of them. But for the normal people, I think it will be the bad. Can you hear that? Yeah, so we have custom alloy spring seal, which can do this, which is powder coated with PEI. Powder coated with PEI. Now that sounds difficult. It is difficult. We had to invent it, but uh, there is no glue between the, the sheet and the PEI, so you cannot, uh, you cannot scratch it off. And you cannot uh, damage it with a uh, spatula or anything. And also, you can just you know, pop the parts off. So that's very nice. The heated bed has uh, 25 magnets uh, embedded 0.2 millimeters below the traces. So it's seamless. You cannot, uh, you cannot see it. Oh, so, so just to make sure people understand, you've got the PCB of the bed and the magnets are underneath embedded. Yes, the, there are melt pockets with magnets glued in. So this holds the, the sheet on top. And that's how it works. It's very nice and convenient. I'm really looking forward to, to this. So yeah, let's, let's explore the machine. What else have you added to this and changed since the Mark II S? So, on the first side, it looks pretty similar, but uh, the biggest hardware uh, improvement is the new frame, which uses the aluminum extrusion. Uh, we can maybe get the detail later, but we also have a lot of new uh, electronics features. So this is the new Einze, Einze Rambo. Uh, which has the trinamic drivers. Uh, they have 256 micro stepping. We have some cool stuff like ambient term thermistor. We can detect blown fuses, all, all this kind of stuff. But it enables us to uh, detect crashes, enables us to go very, very silent, and also, uh, you know, much smoother printing. So this is one of the things. It also, by the way, it also has Accessories board where, where you can mount Raspberry Pi Zero E. So it's it's ready for Octoprint. Just you just plug and play, good to go. Yeah, you, you get the Raspberry Pi. You you solder in a small header, plug it in as Arduino shield, and you will be good to go. You mean I have to solder something, Joe? Well, man, I don't I don't want to I don't want to resell Raspberry Pi. So you know how that how difficult that is. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's ready for that. So also the, the connectors are new to accommodate new sensors. So uh, the, the Pinda probe for auto bed leveling now also has thermistor in it, so uh, there's no temperature drift because all the induction probes you have on the printers, when they heat up, the sensing distance changes. Oh, so if I'm preheating for ABS versus PLA, it, it changes? Yeah, so you need to adjust the, the Z a little bit differently for those two materials. But now, thanks to the thermistor embedded in the, in the Pinda probe, we can have a table uh, of values for temperatures, how, how we should offset it. So basically, you don't have to touch it again. Also, we have the filament sensor. I'll bring one up. So it's this little thingy. And basically, you can think of it as a fancy sensor from a laser mouse. So this is what you were teasing on Twitter with the lasers. Yes. So it shoots lasers <laughs> and gets an image of the filament back, and it can track uh, the presence of the filament. We will uh, take a look how the presence works, but also it can detect its movement, so we can detect jammed nozzle. So it's, oh, okay. So it's very smart. It's not dumb like if you put mechanical switch in. It, it, it's basically an encoder. So that is very, very handy. So, you know, you have a long print, and you are not sure if the spool has enough material. So it can... You know, it can ask for a new spool in the morning, and you don't have to worry about losing the print. Oh, so it's not just, I mean, the filament detection is implemented so that it could run out while I'm not there. It'll pause the print and just wait for me to insert filament again. Well, what would be the point otherwise? I'm just, no, I'm just making sure. That's fantastic. How else would it work? But also, uh, also we can detect the gym extruder and detect it, also detect it with motor because they can detect skip steps. So uh, possibly depending how well uh, we will be able to implement it. If, if you get tangled spool, the printer should, rec should recognize that too and ask you to fix it. Oh, so the printer, because it can detect the motion of the filament, it'll realize it's not feeding, yes. pause the print, and ask you to fix it. Exactly. And also, well, we have a lot of ideas. 
Yes, you do. Yes, you do. So, you know, we are known for improving the printers, even the ones that are out, because we have a lot of sensors. We can do a lot of stuff with firmware we never thought of during the development. So we can actually do, when, when we uh, detect the jam extruder, we can also offer a cold pull. And that makes total sense. Yeah, so you can try continue. You know, it's still better to try cold pull than, uh, you know, throwing off a uh, 20-hour long print. Well, and I, I did see with the sensors, you're able to detect when the filament is inserted, which then it'll start to grab it rather than having a, like a timed loop. Uh, I mean, that, 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 that's just showing off, right? <laughs> but that's fantastic because you, what you're trying to do is, is enable features on the machine that are going to make it more accessible to everybody. It's like heated chamber here. It's really hot. For everybody that's watching right now, it's, it is warm. We actually got this nice train engine melted yesterday. That's Daniel, Daniel Norais' train, right? Yes, it is. And it melted. Oh, no. Look at this. Oh, no. <laughs> He'll just have to make a new one, I guess. Yes, we will. But this has such a nice paint job. But I'm melting now. <laughs> so we, we, better, uh, we better move. We also Absolutely. Have, uh, we also have the power panic, which is uh, power panic. We call it power panic, but you know it's uh, power loss detection and recovery. Uh, we do it without battery. battery. Yes. So basically, we have a small board which detects mains voltage and uh, cuts off the heaters. So we still have some uh, power left in the caps in the power supply. So we can store the position and go up a bit and try to go to the side. Depending on how much power is stored, we sometimes can even go to the end of the axis. And once the printer is uh, turned on again, uh, it can resume. Uh, so it doesn't need to rehome. It knows exactly where it's at. It will rehome. Oh, it will. Okay. It will. But you know that's that's pretty quick. You you never know where you end up uh, as as the final position. Does it? Well, if you have a print on the bed, is it home Z or just X and Y? Uh, just X and Y. Okay. okay. The, the Z with the print isn't going to work. I, I, I figured that. I, 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 I thought you had thought of that, but I just want to make sure. Yeah. So the, some of the cool new stuff, I mean, uh, we added Noctua fan. Uh, Noctua fan, because why, why don't? And the Bontech extruder, right? The Bontech gears? Yeah, we use genuine Bontech. All cool stuff, man. I cannot even remember all of it. It's, it's packed full of stuff. Uh, what's really interesting, though, you've only had to jump the price 50 bucks. Yes. I mean, that's the beauty of volume, volume manufacturing. But at the same time, the Mark II S is still a fantastic machine, and you were able to drop that by $100. Yes, I mean, uh, we, we shipped uh, two MK3s to the make test, and because Mark II S prints so nice, uh, they, they were just the same at the print quality. So, I mean, uh, if, if you're on a budget, you can go with Mark II S. If you want to go all, all in, you can get the Mark III. For people that have the Mark II or the Mark II S, is there an upgrade path to anything that the Mark III offers? So since we had to switch to 24 volts because of the new drivers, there cannot be full upgrade because all electronics would need to be changed and also the frame is new. So we, we did something called Mark 2.5 upgrade. 2.5? Yes, which gives you the, the new extruder with the filament sensor, new Pinda Pro, the Noctua fans, the Bontech, and also you get the, you get the magnetic bed with the, with the sheet. And that is uh, that is $159, no, $149, I think, for for uh, Mark II S customers, $99 for customers who bought the Mark II S uh, in last month before the release, and $199 for you know regular people who don't have Mark II S and not, are not part of the club. That seems like a, a fair way to deal with it. And the the feature set on the Mark III is is packed. This is it's full of a lot of stuff. Tell me, is there anything it's missing that you wish was there? Oh, that is a tough question. I think we have everything in there. Is that uh, you'll debut those features in the Mark X, right? Yes. I mean, I don't, I don't get it. Some people fell for Mark X with Touch ID, so <laughs> it's got the fingerprint right there. I mean, yes. that's awesome. All right, so. I guess well, that's it. That's it, man. Hey, I want to say thank you so much for being a supportive member of the community and offering such great things. Uh, I love the machine. I'm really looking forward to get my hands on it. Yeah, I hope to ship the test units in like two, three weeks. So I'll uh, expect another unannounced package. I'll clear a spot on my desk. Joe, one more time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good Maker Fair. High five. High five.